Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to create markups and use our tool chest in Review 20. We can create markups by going to the Tools dropdown and then mousing over Markup. Here we can see the full list of markups, and we can see that there's keyboard shortcuts assigned to them on the right side. So if I click on my drawing and I press the T key, you'll see that my cursor changes to the A inside of a square and a plus sign, meaning that now I can create a text box and type data. Then when you're done typing any text in Bluebeam Review, you'll want to press the escape key. Now let's not get into creating all the markups yet because I want to go back to the tools dropdown and mouse over markup and show you guys that there's a little pin icon that appears whenever we mouse over a markup. So if we click on this pin icon, it'll tell us which category of tools it's located in. And I've actually turned on my tools and the text one happens to contain the text box shortcut. And if we look at the A inside of a square icon next to text box, we can find it in the top of our screen. So you can see it, it's all the way on the left side of my screen right here. The A inside of a circle, I actually place here manually. It is not turned on in the text group of tools by default. So I did that by going to the Tools dropdown, mousing over Toolbars, and then clicking on Customize. You can also right-click next to a group of tools that already exists. If you don't have any tools, you'll need to go to Tools and Toolbars. But you can also right-click next to them, and you'll see most of the tools in this list. The Form group of tools turns itself on and off if you have Review Extreme. Basically, it doesn't stay on permanently. So whenever you close the program, it will also hide itself. So I'm now going to click on Customize. And here we can see all different kinds of tools. And I've already talked about this in a previous tutorial, but just so you guys know, what I did was, is I went to the Categories tab right up here, and I went to Markup, and I'm now going to look for the Typewriter tool, which is the A inside of a circle, and there it is. It's all in alphabetical order, so it's near the end. So what I want to do now is make sure that it's in the correct toolbar. So I'm going to scroll down in my toolbar to the text toolbar. And we can see that typewriter is right here. It was not here by default, so if I get rid of it now, all I need to do is select typewriter in the commands area, use this arrow to move it to the items area, and then select on typewriter and move it all the way up until it's below the text box with these blue arrows right here. So that's how we can customize our toolbars. Let's use our text box shortcut and let's create our first markup. We can basically click and hold, or we can just click because it will always make a box or a rectangle. And we can make this as big as we want to. And then we can type some data. And when we're done typing, whenever we are done typing text in particular, we want to press the escape key. So for text, we press escape. But whenever we're drawing shapes, we'll want to press enter. And we'll draw some shapes very soon. Now we have some text. And what we can do is, is we can modify this and set this text as our default so that every time we click on our text shortcut, it's going to use the same properties that we modified in this one. So we have it selected and we can now open up our properties panel right here. Here in properties, we can modify a lot of different settings for our text box. For example, we can modify the color of the text, but what is this color? It's a little bit misleading. I'm gonna change this to the color orange and you'll see that we now have a border around our text box, this orange box around it. So this is not really the text color itself. The font color is the text color itself. So if I wanted to change this to black, for example, we now have some black text. Now, how do I get rid of this border around the text? If I go into the color palette, we can see that there's a little blank area here. And for some reason, the button for no text box doesn't really exist here. Now, if we go to fill color, for example, we can change the text's fill color. For example, I'll make it red in this case. And for fill color, that box says none right here. So we don't really have a none box for the actual border color. So how do we get rid of it? We can actually go to our line width right here and we can reduce this to zero. So I'm just gonna make that zero. And now that border is gone. Whenever you add a border, it actually will never make your text box bigger. So if the text doesn't fit on a line, it'll move to the second line, just like how you can see here. So we'll turn that border off. And now if I want my box to fit around my text perfectly, there's a shortcut for that. 
Every time a markup is selected, a special bar with special properties appears. And this bar happens to be right here, and you can see similar colors that we see in our text box properties panel right here on the right side. So a lot of these settings are similar. We can change that line color right here. This one is actually called line instead of just color. So if we mouse over this one, it doesn't really tell us that. So I can change this now to blue, for example. I'll need to get rid of it again by reducing the line width to zero. So you can see that we can change some settings very quickly up here. We can also change things like our line opacity. Fill opacity happens to be right here. So that's why my red fill is not blocking out the text or being too bright. So we can always change that when we need to. And I've set mine to about 20%. 30% is also quite nice. So I don't want to fill color. So we're going to go back to fill color and click on none. So that is now gone. And if we want our text box to fit around the text perfectly, the shortcut for that is auto size text box. It's two arrows facing towards the center of this box right here. So if I click on that, now my box has reduced its size. So if I accidentally make the box bigger, or if I haven't changed an automatic setting in preferences that we'll talk about very soon, then I can click on this box, or this button, excuse me, and we can see how the box fits around our text perfectly. Now, we can do the opposite scenario. If we want our text to fit within a certain sized box, and we don't mind that the font will change automatically, then we can actually use this button right here, this A with four arrows facing away from it. This is called auto size text. So we can now click on this, and the text is now fitting inside of the box as much as possible. And if we look in our text box properties panel, we can see that the font size doesn't exist anymore. And this auto button has now turned itself on. If we turn this off, that means that the font size is now set to 53.4, a random number. If we leave auto on, if we stretch the box larger, we can see that the text also gets bigger with it. So this could be useful for some visual instances, but I like to keep my text fonts uniform. So I usually have auto off and then I can type any font size I want. So I'm going to type 20, for example, and now we have our text back to its original size. And so we have some more properties that we can modify for our text boxes. Let's zoom in on our text box and select it. And let's go back into properties and look at some more settings. We can change the style of the box around our text box. So it doesn't have to be a straight line. It could have some dashes at different intervals. It could have a little cloud pattern. And if we do change this, the box doesn't necessarily turn itself on. So we'll need to basically turn our line width up in order to see that pattern appear. So we can see that we now have a little cloud pattern around it. We can also change the size of the actual lines or the pattern itself. So we can essentially change how that looks with this size right here. Then we can also change the shape. So it doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be a circle. It could be a triangle. And it could also be a hexagon, for example. And a hexagon is a new shape that was introduced in Review 20. Then we have the font area right here where we can change the font of our text. So I like Times New Roman, but some people prefer Arial, for example. So now we have our text at Arial. And then we can change our font size, very similar settings that we've seen in Microsoft Word before. Line spacing and margins can also be changed. Our font color, like I said earlier, can be changed. And we have our alignment. So you've seen these settings in word processing programs, for example. We even have bold, italics, etc., etc. And if we keep scrolling down, we even have some more custom settings. These have to do with custom columns that I've created. So we can talk about that in another tutorial. Then we have layout, so we can choose exactly where this text box is going to be located, for example. And as you can see, as I move it, the X and Y coordinates of the text box itself are actually changing. And then I believe the document width, I actually haven't tested this before. Yep, it'll actually make the text box bigger or smaller if you change its width or height. So if I'm going to set this to one, for example, we just made that box bigger. The contents inside don't get bigger, but the box does. So that's quite interesting. Now, all the way at the bottom of properties, we have two very important options that we don't need to use here, but I just wanted to show you guys that they are here. We can use add to tool chest, which we'll talk about very soon, and set as default. So if I like this text box, if I think it's perfect, then I can make sure that every time I click on the shortcut for the text box, that it's going to have these properties. So if I click on set as default, it's going to change that. Now, in my case, I don't want to do that because I already had my text box with these settings here. I use this for training. So these settings are optimal for me.
for example. But yes, you can always change your default tool by essentially clicking on set as default with, with, with whichever tool that you want. So we can actually test this quickly by clicking on this text box and clicking on set as default. I'm now going to use the shortcut and you can see that the text is quite similar to the one that we just saved before. Now, if I want to change it back to my previous settings, I would just need to find a text box that has those settings. So I can click on this one and click on set as default. And now my default is back to the way it was with my older settings, for example. And so that's how we can essentially create these text boxes. They're quite useful. And there's a lot of different settings that we can modify with our text boxes. Let's create another text box. And then I'm going to show you how we can add it to our tool chest. There's two ways, like I mentioned. We've seen the first one in our properties area, and you can see that while I'm creating a text box, it does allow us to modify its properties while it's being created. So we don't have to create it and then modify it afterwards. Although while it's being created, we can't add a text box or a markup to the tool chest. So let's type some data, some data, and then we're gonna press the escape key to finish off our text. Now the options for adding to the tool chest and set as default are not grayed out anymore. Now, instead of having properties open and scrolling all the way down to do this, I'm just going to right click on the markup. Now we can see that add to tool chest is down here along with set as default. So we can mouse over add to tool chest and now we can choose any existing group of tools that we already have. So I have my own personal tool chest with my favorite tools. So I'm just going to add it to that one. When we do this, the tool chest side panel automatically opens. So on the left side, we do have our tool chest. And now we can see different kinds of markups that are in the tool chest. Our markups in our tool chest can be used in two different ways. Sometimes we can see that the original text in our markups is visible. And when we add them to the tool chest, this is typically the case. So some data is right down here. But if I double click on this, it now changes its icon to the generic A inside of a square. And it shows an A with the color red. This immediately tells us that this is a text box and its color is red. It also does not have a border. So if I was to click on this and then mouse over onto my screen, I could then create a new text box with new data. And then I can press the escape key. Now, what if I had a border around my text? I'm going to change this back to an orange border. Let's make that a little bit wider. I'm going to stretch it to the right and then I'll use the auto size text box feature. It's a really quick way to keep everything on one line when you add text boxes or other text inside of a box and you want it to basically all be on one line. Then if I right click and mouse over add to tool chest and add this to my tool group, we can see that the text comes in in what we call drawing mode. But if we double click on it, it's now in properties mode and we can see that orange border around it. Now, I didn't have to create a brand new text box and add it to the tool chest to make a quick modification to an existing toolbox. All I need to do, or excuse me, to an existing text box. All I need to do is actually select one of those text boxes in the tool chest, and I can make changes to it right here. So I'm going to change its color to a blue color, and we can see that the A is now blue. And if I double click on this tool, it's now a completely different markup. And now I can place this onto the drawing. So when it's in drawing mode, when you're using the carbon copy of the actual markup, you can essentially place it. Now, I'm able to place this repeatedly because I have reused tools turned on, and we talk about this in a previous tutorial. But just in case, you can go to the tools dropdown, mouse over toolbars, and you can turn on your status bar. And that way, you'll have this bar down here, and reuse tools is this icon right here. So I recommend keeping it on so that when you place tools from the tool chest on your sheet, you can place them repeatedly and you don't have to worry about reselecting the tool in the tool chest and placing it a second or a third time. Now, when you're done using your tools in this mode, you must press the escape key. That way you can cancel out of it. Now I'm going to switch to the select tool down here, and I'm just going to select all of these markups. And now I can either right click on one of them and delete them, or I could press the delete key, whatever I prefer. So that's how we can modify tools in our tool chest and use them appropriately. Let's create a new tool group in our tool chest. We can do this by clicking on the tool chest dropdown, and then we can see the full list of our different tool groups and we can turn them on or off. Let's click on manage tool sets. Here we can see our list once again, and this time we can select them in the list and we can use these arrows on the left side to reorder our tools. We can see this is actually changing in real time as I move a tool group, for example. 
Now let's click on add on the bottom right. And here we can give our new tool group a name. Let's call it training tools. And then we can see that we have these options on the left side. These are very important. Display is pretty self-explanatory. Our tool group will display itself in the tool chest. The relative path will allow it to be found if hard drives or different folders are moved, for example. So this should be relatively useful. No pun intended, of course. And show in all profiles is actually turned off by default, and there's a reason for this. You would think that it would be very convenient for our tools to be shown in all of our profiles. A profile is our interface in the program, and we can find them by going to the review dropdown and then mousing over profiles. And I talk about this in another tutorial. And switching between profiles could allow us to view our tools in all of them. And this could be useful for some circumstances. However, in doing so, it doesn't really allow us to modify tool groups and add more tools to them, and it doesn't allow us to export them properly either. So I recommend turning this off and allowing your tool group and your tool chests to be linked to a specific profile. They're much, much easier to export and share with other people when you do this. And this setting can be changed whenever we need to. For now, I'm going to click OK. It's now going to ask me to save my tool group. And typically, it wants us to save it somewhere deep in our computer where Bluebeam Reviews folder is. This is the file path. And the app data folder is actually hidden by default. And I'll go over how to turn that on in another tutorial. But it's not very important right now. What I do is that I go to my Documents folder. I have a Bluebeam Review folder right here. And I have a Tool Sets folder. So I can save this in a folder that I know where it's located. And it's not 10 folders deep into my hard drive. So I'm going to click on Save. And now, where's my tool group? It's all the way at the bottom of the list, so I'm going to select it right here, and I'm going to use my arrow keys to move it all the way up to the top of my list so that it is the first tool group. There it is. Now it's an empty tool group right up here, and we're just going to click OK. But before we do, we can select any tool group, such as my tool group, and we can click on the Modify button. This allows us to check any different tools that are in the tool chest, and we can make some very minor modifications. We can essentially export them individually. We can clear a tool from the tool group right here if we need to. Relative path is here, and there's show in all profiles. So I could turn that on and off whenever I need to. Now, I usually don't use the modify area to export tools or use any punch key imports or clear a tool. I would simply go into my tool chest and right click on a tool, and then I can just delete it from there. So I find that to be a lot faster. Also, in the Manage Toolsets dialog, we have Import and Export. This means that I can select any tool group and click on Export. It's now going to ask me to save my tool chest because I added some tools to it. So anytime you make a change to a tool, or if you add a tool to your tool group, you'll want to save it, and then you can export it. So it's a .btx file, and I can save it anywhere I need to. For now, I'm just going to click on Cancel. And import is here as well. So once you want to find a tool group, you can click on import right here. Or you can double click on that tool group in a folder, and it's going to automatically be detected by Bluebeam Review. Review will ask you if you want to import it, and you can say yes or no. And then it'll automatically be in your list of tool groups. So let's close out of this for now. And let's look at this lock icon right here. This lock icon means that if we try to add a tool to this tool chest, it essentially will ask us if we want to unlock the tool chest, which seems a little bit odd. So let's try to add this one to the tool chest. It's going to say that we don't have a lock icon, even though we do. Would you like to get a lock in the tool set? What this translates to is, would you like to unlock the tool set for editing and modifications? So the answer is yes. Our markup is now in the tool chest, and we can see that there's a check next to the little gear wheel right here. And we can basically add more tools to this tool chest. We can also click on the gear wheel, and we can see that there's many options here, including the option to quickly export this tool set. Now, when you're done modifying your tool group, what you'll want to do is you'll want to save it right here. And now the lock icon is back on the tool group. And this is essentially how we can use our tool chest and create markups in the tool chest effectively. Thanks very much for watching our tutorial on markups and the tool chest in Bluebeam Review 20. Once again, my name is Ari, and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.